In this video, I will teach you how to find the resultant vector when two or more vectors are acting together. The key is organization. Use this chart form to guide you and uh, you will not go wrong. An airplane is flying on a compass heading or bearing of 170 degrees at 460 miles per hour. A wind is blowing with the bearing 200 degrees at 80 miles per hour. Find the actual ground speed and direction of the plane. Alright, that ground speed and direction of, of the plane will be the resultant of the following two vectors. There's the plane velocity, which I will just call the plane, and then there's the wind velocity. And in the third column we will record the resultant. And of course that is what we are looking for. In the first row we will record the magnitude and direction of each vector. R is the magnitude, theta is the direction. Um, in this chart, this direction will be measured from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. In the second row, we will record the component form of the vector x comma y. So if the plane is flying at 460 miles per hour, that is the magnitude, 460 miles per hour. Now the direction, we have to be careful they're giving us a bearing of 160, but bearing is not measured from the positive x-axis, which is what we need. Um, so I'm going to do a slight transformation. Okay, so the bearing is 170, and then I might as well write this down for later. For the wind, I see that the bearing is 200. Okay, um, the wind is blowing at 80 miles per hour. So the 80 mile per hour wind, that's the magnitude for the wind. So let's go ahead and find the direction for the plane and the direction for the wind. <coughs> so bearing is measured from north in a clockwise direction. So when they talk about a bearing of 170, All right, right there, um, so far that's a bearing of 90 once you get to east. If I went all the way to south, that would be a bearing of 180, which would be too far. Um, so bearing of 170 must be in the fourth quadrant like this. Okay, so this, this is what a bearing of 170 looks like. Um, the reference angle, okay, let's talk about uh, the size of this reference angle right here. We should be able to get this uh, by doing 170 minus 90. All right, I'm subtracting this 90 degrees up here, and that should leave the reference angle. So the reference angle is 80. Now, what we need for the chart is the angle as measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, like this. So um, we call this angle theta, and theta in this case should equal 360 degrees minus the 80. All right, because this angle is on its way to being 360 degrees, but stopping short by 80 degrees. <coughs> So that's 280 degrees, and that's what we will put on the chart. Okay, similarly for the wind, the wind has a bearing of 200. Again, bearing is measured from north uh, and clockwise. So, uh, so that's a bearing of 90. Here's a bearing of 180. If I went all the way to here, that would be a bearing of 270. Uh, but it's a bearing of 200, so that tells me that it's going to be somewhere here in the third quadrant. Okay, so this is the bearing 200. Now, 
let's talk about the reference angle right here. Um, that reference angle should be 270 minus 200. If I had kept going to west, west is at a bearing of 270. The actual vector is here at a bearing of 200. So that's a difference of 70 degrees. So the reference angle here must be 70. Now we need the angle as measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. We need this angle theta, which should be 180 degrees plus the extra 70 of the reference angle. So that's 250 degrees, and that is what goes on the chart. So now we have the magnitude and direction of each of the vectors. Next, we go to the second row. Uh, there's no way to combine the magnitude and direction directly to form the resultant vector. That's why we need the second row. We need to convert both of these into component form. Now, the way you do that, if you have the magnitude r and the direction theta measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, like we did, then the horizontal component can be found by doing r cosine theta, and the vertical component can be found by doing r sine theta. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so for the plane, the horizontal component, r cosine theta, would be 460 cosine 280. Uh, similarly, the vertical component should be 460 sine 280. And this is something that can be calculated in a calculator. The horizontal component is 79.88. The vertical component is negative 453.01. And we'll just record that here on the chart. Uh, now let's talk about the wind. So again, we will find the horizontal component by doing r cosine theta. In this case, that would be 80 cosine 250. And the vertical component will be 80 sine 250. Calculator. The horizontal component is negative 27.36, while the vertical component is negative 75.18. And we record that on the chart. So now that we have the plane's velocity in component form and the wind velocity in component form, we can find the resultant velocity by simply adding these vectors together. Add the horizontal with the horizontal and the vertical with the vertical. So we get the resultant vector 52.52 and negative 528.19, the horizontal and vertical components. However, we need the magnitude and direction. So we will calculate that off to the side first with the magnitude we can easily find the magnitude by using the magnitude formula. So we will do 52.52 squared plus negative 528.19 squared and the square root of all that in the calculator. And that's the magnitude, which means the ground speed of the plane is 530.79 miles per hour. Now, how about the direction? Okay, so to calculate the direction, let's think about what quadrant we are in. So, the uh, horizontal component is positive, and the vertical component is negative. That means we are east and south, or to the right and down on this graph. 
So we are in the fourth quadrant, so let's draw our vector into the fourth quadrant. And uh, now let's think about the horizontal and vertical component of this vector. All right, the horizontal component is the 52.52, and the vertical component is this negative 528.19. We can use this to find the reference angle R. The tangent of R should equal negative 528.19 over 52.52. Now I'm going to erase the negative sign because all I care about is the positive value of R. I can find that by doing the inverse tangent of 528.19 over 52.52. Calculator. So the reference angle is 84.32 degrees. Now normally we like to measure the direction from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. However, we need to remember to always give the direction of the final answer using the same form that they gave in the original problem. So in the original problem they talked about bearing and bearing is measured uh, starting at north and moving clockwise. So that's what we need to do here. Um, so instead of measuring from the positive x-axis we are going to measure the bearing which would look like this. Okay, so we should be able to calculate that bearing, and uh, it's important to use the word bearing um, so people don't think that you are talking about the angle from the positive x-axis. So I'll always say bearing. Um, so the bearing should be 90 degrees plus the reference angle. So 90 degrees plus 84.32 degrees. So we're talking about a bearing of 174.32. So that's what we will put on the chart, 174.32. And again, you must use the word bearing. If you don't say bearing, then it's assumed that you are measuring counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, which is not what we want. Go ahead and put a box around it because that is the final answer. Now I'm going to do another example, but um, this one is the same as the last. So please pause the video and try to do this problem by yourself first. An airplane is flying at a compass heading or bearing of 340 degrees at 325 miles per hour. A wind is blowing with a bearing of 320 degrees at 40 miles per hour. Find the actual ground speed and direction of the plane. So again, we've got the plane velocity and the wind velocity, and we will be finding the resultant velocity. first row is for magnitude and direction. On this chart, the direction must be measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. In this row, we will record the component form of each vector. So, if the plane is flying at 325 miles per hour, that is the magnitude. Um, the direction is a bearing of 340. Which um, we will not be able to directly use 340 degrees on the chart. We will have to figure out what that would be if measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Let me come back to that in a minute. The wind is blowing at 40 miles per hour. That's the magnitude, 40 miles per hour. The direction is the wind bearing is 320 degrees.
which again we will have to convert to a measurement from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. Let's do that now. A bearing of 340 degrees means start at north and go clockwise. So that's 90 degree bearing at east. This would be 180 degree bearing at south. This would be 270 degree bearing at west. Uh, but we gotta keep going into the second quadrant. Okay, so this is your 340 degree bearing. Now, we need to know what would this uh, direction be if measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So the best way to figure that out is to know the reference angle. Okay, so this reference angle, which I will call R, should be 340 degrees minus 270 degrees. Think about it. Um, as I was traveling around, I said 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. So at west, we were talking about a bearing of 270 degrees. But by the time we got to the actual position of the vector, we were at 340 degrees. So the space between is the difference. Subtract. That is a difference of 70 degrees. So the reference angle right here is 70 degrees. So now we can figure out um, this blue angle, which I will call theta, measured from the positive x-axis. So this must be 180 degrees minus the reference angle. All right, because as I'm measuring from the positive x-axis, I was on my way to 180 degrees, but I had to stop short by 70. So that means that theta is going to be 110 degrees. And that's the angle that we put on the chart. All right, let's do the same thing for the wind. Uh, bearing of 320, again, is going to be 90, 180, 270, 320, will be somewhere here in the second quadrant again. So again, I can find the reference angle by doing 320 minus 270. Uh, because this is 270, if we're talking about bearing, this is 270, and this is the 320 that we were given. So the reference angle is 50, so this is 50 degrees right here. Now let's turn that into an angle measured counterclockwise from east like this. All right, this angle is called theta. And uh, that's going to be 180 degrees minus 50. This angle was on its way to 180, but it had to stop short by the amount of 50. So that means theta is going to equal 130 degrees. And that's the direction that goes on the chart, 130 degrees. So now we have the magnitude and direction of each vector. There's no way to directly combine these and get the resultant. So we have to convert them both into component form first. I can find the horizontal component by doing r cosine theta. r is the magnitude, theta is the direction. I can get the vertical component by doing r sine theta. So that's what I'm going to do. So for the plane, r cosine theta is 325 cosine 110. R sine theta is 325 sine 110.
put that in your calculator. The horizontal component is negative 111.16 and the vertical component is 305.40 and we just record that on the chart right here. So similarly we can find the component form for the wind. Our cosine theta will be 40 whoops I started to put sine 40 cosine 130 our sine theta will be 40 sine 130 and again to the calculator the horizontal component is negative 25.71 and the vertical component is 30.64 and we just record that on the chart right here now that we have the component form for both vectors we can find the resultant vector by simply adding these two vectors together. We add the horizontal component with the horizontal component and the vertical component with the vertical component. So the resultant vector has the horizontal component of negative 136.87 and the vertical component of 336.04. But what we need is the magnitude and direction similar to what we had for the plane and the wind at the start. So we can calculate that off to the side starting with the magnitude. We can find the magnitude by simply using the magnitude formula negative 136.87 squared plus 336.04 squared square root of all that in the calculator. That's 362.84 which means the ground speed of the plane is 362.84 miles per hour. Now all we need is the direction. So as I go to find the direction remember one thing um, on this chart so far we've been careful to make sure that we always use the type of direction that's measured from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. However, for the final answer we need the direction to be in the same form that was given to us in the original problem. So in the original problem we had bearing so we're going to need a direction in the form of bearing which is why we will measure from the north going clockwise. Okay, so let's set it up. This is the resultant vector. Notice that the horizontal component is negative and the vertical component is positive. That means that we are to the west and to the north. So let's draw a vector in the second quadrant then. Okay, now let's think about the horizontal and vertical components here. All right, there's my vertical component, here's my horizontal component. So the negative 136.87, that's my horizontal, my 336.04, that's my vertical. So I can find this reference angle R by using tangent. Okay, so we're finding direction now, so let me write this down. All right, because I do magnitude and then I do direction. So I can find the reference angle because the tangent of the reference angle should equal 336.04 over 136.87. Notice I'm ignoring the negative sign because I really just want the positive value of R. Alright, so the measure of angle R should be the inverse tangent of the fraction 336.04 over 136.87. Calculator. So the reference angle is 67.84 degrees. Great. Now, what we need 
is the bearing though. So bearing, the bearing has to be measured from the north going clockwise. So we need this angle that goes like this. And kabam. So keeping track of what we're doing, at east we had a bearing of 90, at south 180, at west we had a bearing of 270. And then we went an additional R. So the bearing of this vector should be 270 plus the reference angle, 67.84. So that is 337.84 degrees. So let's go ahead and record that for our final answer. 337.84 degrees. Now it is absolutely critical that you include the word bearing. If you just write 337.84 degrees, that means 337 degrees measured from the positive x-axis that you're talking about an angle that's in the fourth quadrant and that would be wrong. So don't do that, okay? Put the word bearing. And go ahead and put a box around it because this is your final answer. Hey guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Go ahead and click over here to watch the next video and click over here to subscribe. That way you'll get every new video delivered right to your home screen.